Let's say that I have a contract that I want to deploy many times. So here, for example, I have a contract named deploy me. And the cost of deploying this contract is around 230,000 gas. So if I were to deploy this contract twice, that will be about two times 230,000 gas. And if I were to deploy it 10 times, that will be 10 times this number. However, using a function available in Viper called create forwarder2, we can significantly reduce the cost of gas to deploy a contract. And using this function and deploying the deploy me contract, the cost of gas to deploy the deploy me contract is around 65,000. That is about four to five times cheaper than if we were to deploy the contract every time. So in this video, I'm gonna explain how to use create forwarder2. And then I'll explain why a master copy must not implement self-destruct. Basically having a function to call self-destruct on the contract that you're creating using create forwarder2. I'll show you why it is dangerous to have self-destruct inside the contract that is being deployed. All right, we'll start with a very basic example. Here I have a contract named deployed me. And when this contract is created, it sets the owner to message.sender and sets the state variable name to foobar. Using the function create forwarder to how will we deploy this contract? The first thing that we'll have to do before we can use the function create forwarder to is to deploy this contract. The first contract that is deployed, we'll say that it is the master copy. Inside the create forwarder contract, the function deploy takes in the address of the master copy. And then we create a new contract by calling create forwarder to passing in the address of the master copy. The output of this function is an address, which is the address of the new contract that was deployed. Let's see this in action. So inside Remix, I compiled and deployed two contracts. Deploy me, this is a contract that we're going to be deploying multiple times. And create forwarder too. By deploying the contract above using the function deploy inside this contract, we can deploy contracts for very cheap. To call the deploy function over here, we first need the address of the master copy. The master copy is the contract that was first deployed. In our case, the master copy is this contract, so I'm going to copy the address, paste it here, and then call deploy. Inside the transaction, you can see here inside the output that this address is the address of the new contract. So I'm going to copy this address and then get the deploy me contract at this address. So if I scroll down, I can call the name and I can call the owner. Here, notice two things. First, we can call these functions. It does not throw an error. So this means that we are calling this deploy me contract. But notice that the owner is a zero address and the name is empty string. In other words, the init function was never called. So after we call the function create forwarder to inside deploy me contract, since this function is never called, we'll need to manually set the owner and the name. So I've created a function called setup. It takes in an input of name and it sets the owner and it sets the name state variable to the input. Now we only want this function to be called once. Here we enforce that by requiring that the owner is equal to a zero address. And back inside the create forwarder to contract, we call the function setup. All right, so let's run this again using Remix. I've compiled and redeployed the two contracts. So when we call deploy, for the name input, I'll pass in foobar to match the foobar over here, and then click deploy. Get the address of the new deploy contract from the transaction logs and then get the contract at this address. Expand the new contract. The name is foobar and the owner is this. So in other words, using create forwarder2, the init function was never called. So we manually called the setup function to set up some parameters. And that's the basics of how to use create forwarder2. You deploy once the contract that you're going to be deploying many times. And from next time, you deploy the same contract using this function deploy, passing in the address of the contract that was deployed first, 
and manually setting up the parameters inside the init function. So the next topic that I'm going to discuss is why it is dangerous to have self-destruct inside the master copy contract. So in our case, why would it be dangerous to have the function self-destruct inside this contract? To show you what can go wrong, I created a function called kill. When you call it, it calls the function self-destruct. So I've deployed three contracts. The first deploy me contract with the function kill inside. The create further to contract. And then creating a new deploy me contract using the function deploy and passing in the address of the master copy. Let's see what happens when we call the function kill inside the master copy. First, notice that calling the function name and owner inside the contract that was created using the deploy function is working at the moment. Now scrolling back up, I'm gonna call kill on the master copy. And by doing so, I've just deleted this contract from the blockchain. Now scrolling back down, if I call name or owner, you'll notice that you'll get an error in both cases. So what just happened here? Even though we deleted this contract, why is it that this contract over here is also not working anymore? The reason is because when we create a new contract using create forwarder2, it uses the code at the master copy to execute function calls. And here, because we deleted the original contract, that means we also deleted the original code. So every function calls made to contracts using create forwarder2 no longer works because the code to execute those function calls no longer exists. And that is what can go wrong when you have a self-destruct inside the master copy. So hopefully now you understand how to use create forwarder2 to, to deploy contracts cheaply. However, there are still questions that I would like to answer. For example, why is it that the init function is never called when you use create forwarder2? And how is it that the contracts deployed using create forwarder2 uses the code of the master copy without affecting the state variables inside the master copy? In the next video, I'll try to answer those questions. Thanks for watching. See you later.